Happy May 5th or Feliz Cinco de Mayo. How is it that an obscure Mexican holiday became one of America's biggest drinking days? As more and more Americans get their vaccine, a serious question arises. I got my shot, when can I have my beer? Soon enough. From the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro, Montgomery County, PA, Joe Sixpack, Len Mack now. What's brewing? What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Maker, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. And by Concha Hopkin Brewing Company. Now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at conchiexpress.com. They're not just familiar faces. They're your friends and neighbors. It's their small businesses, a beating heart that makes a neighborhood a home, where personality is served on a plate and imagination paints a brighter world. A place where fresh is always in stock with a personal touch passed down through generations. Support small and make a big difference. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Monco. Hi, welcome to What's Brewing, along with Noted Beer Authority, Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now we're at the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro. Nice to see you. Cheers. I am drinking the Crooked Eye IPA, a little 6.5 action. What about you? Looks good. I've got one that you don't see very often. This is called Regimental 80, and it is a Scottish ale, but not one of those big, heavy Scottish ales. This is easy drinking. All right. Well, all very good. As we do this show, we are days away from Cinco de Mayo, which gave us a good reason to have a swap involving Mexican-style lagers. Right. So I brought you, it's one of my favorite breweries, Great Lakes Brewery out of Cleveland makes this Great Lakes Mexican lager. It is a, well, here's what they say. Spread the blanket and luxuriate in the sunny rays of zesty lime. We're going to talk about lime. Yep. And crisp, clean malt flavor. It's got an ABV of 5.4. Pairs very well with food, they say, which I think we'll get to in a moment as part of Mexican beer. Here's Cheers. to you, Mexican lager. A lot of lime in there. Yeah. yeah a little sort too of, much. Yeah, sort of like uh, bathroom air freshener levels. <laughs> okay. Well... <laughs> I think I like it a little better than that, but yeah, it's a little limey. Yeah. All right, what do you got? Well, uh, I brought along, and I, you know, the Mexican style lagers, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more, but this is a Modella Negra. This is an actual big, Mexican big beer. Oh, okay. Well, my Mexican beer is from Cleveland. Okay. Uh, and that's a big, big seller. It, seller. it is. Well, Modella uh, is a big, big, big brewery, but this Negra is one you don't see a whole lot because it's a dark beer. They make Corona, by the way, the same brewery, mm -hmm. but this is an amber lager. It's more. It's a lot closer to a Bavarian-style Dunkel, a dark ale, or dark lager, rather. Oh, yeah. It's very different from other Mexican beers yes. I've had. Um, imports from Mexico, huge, going way, way up. It's, How come? Well, there's a couple reasons, I think. Uh, partly, there's, you know, a lot of uh, people from south of the border that live in America now. But I think more importantly, the Mexican culture is huge among Americans. I mean, there are so many Mexican-style restaurants out there. A lot of people go down there for vacations. So in some ways, these Mexican beers are a little bit of Mexico that you can have in your own living room. Okay. And Mexican lagers, which is most of their beers, this dunkel aside, um, you know, we do a show about craft beer, not exactly the most exciting, groundbreaking stuff, but people like it. It's true. I mean, Corona is the number one import in America. I mean, which astonishes me because for a long time it would have been a European import. Uh, but, you know, these days people want that really nice, light drinking beer. I also think that advertising goes into a big part. I mean, Corona oh, ads are some of the best. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about this in a second because uh, Cinco de Mayo is May the 5th. Obviously, the show is being run this week of May the 5th. And so I started doing some research on Cinco de Mayo. 
which, by the way, in Mexico, it's, people think it's Mexican Independence Day. No, it's not. It's actually a fairly obscure holiday in Mexico that commemorates one battle they had on Cinco de Mayo. They beat the French in the Battle of Puebla during the French-Mexican War. You remember that one? I, <laughs> I may have missed that one in yeah. history class. Okay. So in California, um, Chicano, at least what they used to call Chicano, uh, activists, residents used to have annual celebrations of it. That was it. And then in the 80s, the beer companies realized we can sell this. Right. Right? And so they started making campaigns. Miller Lite, Anheuser-Busch started doing it. Um, Cinco de Mayo parties, they would have, they would call it Drinco de Mayo. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, Corona de Mayo. And there was, understandably, some blowback from the Mexican-American community. <laughs> this is our holiday. It's not a drinking day. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it's, it's reminiscent of the way that, uh, you know, drinking has spawned up around, uh, say, Thanksgiving or more, uh, or the day the before. Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving so. Well, it's St. Patrick's Day right. in May is really what it has become, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, and I don't know if I believe this, but this is what I read on a very important website. It said, <laughs> today, Cinco de Mayo generates more beer sales than any other holiday, including Fourth of July, St. Patrick's Day, and the Super Bowl weekend. Really? Well, you know, in beginning of May, maybe it's warmer weather. People, there are a lot of outdoor parties, uh, and like I said before, the, the whole uh, idea of Mexican food going with these beers is a really good opportunity for a party. Yeah, I mean, that's the one thing I would say. I, I am a fan of Mexican food, and the one thing I would say about these, they're kind of like Canadian lagers to me, generally, like a Moosehead Molson kind of thing. It, I agree. It's funny, though, that the, the uh, Great Lakes one and, and other American ones really accentuate the limes aspect yeah. of it, which I kind of think is partly due to that, the chilada, which is a style of Mexican beer drinking, but also the Coronas sticking the lime in the bottle, in, in the neck of the bottle. Um, I also think, again, why is the holiday so popular? Because of where it is on the calendar. I think you alluded to this. Yeah. In March, you got St. Patrick's Day. In April, generally, you have Easter, which is a big holiday. May, there's Mother's Day, not exactly a beer drinking holiday. <laughs> Maybe in your house, not so much in my house. Ma six pack loves her, uh, her, her <laughs> pint. She, but this is, it's like, you know, the calendar's empty, let's make something for people to drink beer. I agree. And, uh, you know, I confess, though, I don't think I've ever really been to a Cinco de Mayo party. It's like one of those things I've avoided, baby. So well, this may be the year. Yes. Uh, coming up, Interesting thing, everybody's getting vaccinated. Some people are celebrating their vaccinations by chugging a, a, a big beer. Good idea, bad idea. You're supposed to wait before you drink after the vaccination. Dr. Sixpack will give you the information. We're at the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro, PA. With Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Mack now. It's what's brewing. It's a place that inspires the dreamers the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, visit Bucks County and be inspired. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing from the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro. Joe Sixpack. Follow him on uh, Twitter at beer underscore radar. Uh, I'm Glenn Mack. Now follow me at Real Glenn Mack. Now the show is at What's Brewing PA. I am drinking uh, an ESB, and uh, you know it's a flavor you and I both uh, respect a lot. This is the Brit. It's great to see them make that here. I've got uh, a beer. It's a India Pale Lager, so basically oh. a hoppy lager. Yeah. Stay classy, Hatboro. <laughs> Good <laughs> nice. name. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, by the way, uh, this brewery is part of the Monco Makers, a great association. Go to their website, download the app, have a good time. So many great breweries around Montgomery County. He stumbled out of most of them, and <laughs> you can attest, they're pretty good. I, I agree. It's uh, a lot of fun to roam the breweries around Okay, here. as we are now in year two of the pandemic, and hopefully coming out of it, people getting their vaccines, Interesting dynamic of something that's been going viral recently. Yeah, it's a fun thing. Get your shot and then chug a beer. 
all at once, maybe. <laughs> but and you know, we, we had the question though: is it is it a good idea? But I, first of all, I should say yeah. that this is something that we've seen that was promoted by Narragansett up in uh, Rhode Island. They were asking people to po post pictures of themselves enjoying a Narragansett after a uh, after getting their shot. And there was in one particular one of a, a guy talking oh. about a guy slugging down a tall boy. It was there. great. It was great. Yeah. Um, but then the question becomes: Is that a good idea? So, should you avoid alcohol before or after your vaccine? There's been some debate on this. Joe Sixpack, the CDC has some guidance for people who are newly vaccinated, but they don't mention beer. Uh, they don't mention booze, excuse right. me, at all. Research on both of the uh, Moderna and Pfizer vaccines never uh, asked the question about whether people drank alcohol before or after, so they don't really know. Yeah, they should have, too. It's a really yeah. logical question yeah, that, to, to ask. Uh, you know, I, in my case, I actually did not drink two days before the shot because a buddy of mine wow. told me not to drink. And then I and then I, on after the second shot, I had that 24 hour, you know, slam. Yeah. And I did not feel like drinking at all after that. So this is this is what um, Dr. Tiana Elliott, uh, a clinical instructor of medicine at NYU, said she said vaccine side effects include muscle aches, pains, feeling under the weather. Compounding those with the side effects of alcohol can make you feel worse recommends maximum of two drinks for a man, one drink for a woman, but you can't. Just, okay. just take it easy, okay? Now, uh, across the world, there are different guidelines in Russia. Be glad you don't live in Russia, just for this reason. A Russian health official said last month that people who received their Sputnik V vaccine should abstain from alcohol for two months. Oh man. Go ahead. I, I will tell you that that was the advice I got when I innocently asked my pharmacist at the Rite Aid what I should be doing. She said, and she had a Russian accent. <laughs> she, she said, a spy. it's always a good idea not to uh, to drink after a vaccine for maybe about two months. Did you, <laughs> you say, excuse me, do you know who I am? I'm Joe Sixpack. Really? Well, after that Russian guy put this out, people, there was such an uproar around Russia that they felt compelled to get their 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 Fauci Fauchinsky <laughs> on, who said that's a little too extreme, and he tweeted, two or three days. That's all you got to do, two or three days. But again, there's really no science in Britain. They recommend a day or two. There's no recommendation here. We, as noted medical authorities, would advise you take it easy. But you know, sip or two. I'm a big uh, proponent of the restoration effects of alcohol. There you go. Well, you know who else is. Uh, and this is so much fun. There is a woman, a 111-year-old woman in South Carolina, Maria Aulenbacher, who became, they believe, the oldest person in America to get the vaccine. And of course, when they do that, the local TV's crews show up, right? And they went out to her nursing home. This woman, by the way, emigrated to the United States at age 100. Okay. And she's 111 and she's, and she's a, doing 111 great. 111 now. Right. Okay. So they her. came out and asked her about it and asked her, what is the secret to your long life? What she said is, everything is normal. I drink wine. I drink beer. I eat what I like. Joe Sixpack, your thoughts? Uh, what a way to live life. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will follow that advice anytime. I love when they go to the old people, right? And every news station does all the 100th birthday and King of Prussia today. We right. asked the woman how she did it. And it's always, you know. You never hear one of them say, I denied myself right. everything in right. life. I've I been lived a vegetarian a, my I lived whole a life. Spartan life. Right. I never enjoyed anything. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, coming up. Oh, you're going to enjoy this. Joe Sixpack sings. At least I'm going to try to get him to. We're going to talk about the greatest beer drinking songs ever made, ever recorded. We're at the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro, PA. I'm enjoying this fine IPA with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now. It's What's Brewing. It's time for spring seasonal beers and the easy drinking favorites at Concha Hocken Brewing Company. There's something for everyone, whether it's the Blood Money Blood Orange IPA, the Crushable Ring the Bell Unfiltered Pilsner, Life Coach Session IPA, or my favorite, MC5, a hazy hop bomb bursting with juicy flavor and aroma. Look for these and more at your favorite local beer retailer or visit any Conshohocken Brewing Company location where you'll find safe, comfortable indoor and outdoor seating. I'll see you there. That's what's 
Brewing Beer Brewdown is sponsored by the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. Vote for your choices on Twitter at beer underscore radar, Real Glen Mac now, or What's Brewing PA. Welcome back to What's Brewing at the Crooked Eye. I can make the Crooked Eye. Good. Brewery <laughs> in Hanborough. <laughs> yeah. Arg. Uh, Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now. I'm enjoying this Hellas a Time lager. What do you got there? Uh, this is a uh, Berliner Weiss pooch. Uh, pretty tart. I like okay. it. Uh, this is not only the week for Cinco de Mayo. This is also uh, legendarily the anniversary of the release of Roll Out the Barrel which I believe you <laughs> see as the greatest beer drinking song ever? Uh, it's up there. You okay. know, 1939, it was released by the Andrews Sisters. Uh, you know, is there any better beer drinking music than polka music? <laughs> well, <laughs> and I know the version, what's his name, Frankie Yankovic, who might be Weird Al Yankovic's dad. Is really? Dad. I think he might be. Yeah. Uh, and they always played it at baseball games in Milwaukee. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. I would imagine that's the first beer drinking song anybody ever had, Joseph. Oh, Beck. Little do you know, <laughs> Glenn. Come on. Yeah, what do you got? Well, I've turned up something from the 13th century. Wow. Uh, You've this, got a great, great CD collection. Yeah, I do. I do. This is actually part of my uh, my collection of Latin texts. Oh, no, good. Uh, the Carmina Burana, which is a uh, an old old set of uh, texts, and it includes a song that was sung as a drinking song called Mie Propositum, 13th Catchy. century. And it is described by some, at least by one Latin scholar, as the single greatest drinking song ever, which is, includes the lyrics, my proposal is to die in the tavern where the wine will be near my mouth. That's <laughs> so great. Yeah. Can we hear that? Well, I'm not going to sing it, but we do have a little bit of a All video. Right, here you go. Here's a little bit of that. We num sit appositum morientis ori, ut dicant cum venerint angelorum cori, deus sit propitius vica potatori, vica potatori. Okay. That, 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 that's enough of that. <laughs> um, we exactly. asked on social media uh, people who view us their best beer, drink, their best drinking song. Not be beer, but I'll, you start. What's your favorite drinking song? All right, so it's got to be a song that sounds great in a bar, which yep. really knocks out a lot because there's too many like long, slow drinking songs that don't really sound good in a bar. There's one band that always sounds great in a bar, and that's the Rolling Stones. And oh, I sure. think Honky Tonk Woman to me. Okay, uh, that's good. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. A barroom queen in Memphis, gin soaked barroom queen in Memphis, uh, but it actually has one other element that makes a great beer drinking song the cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> Need more cowbell? Yes. Okay, uh, my all time favorite drinking song is One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer by George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers. That is probably the number one. When you mention any beer drinking or bar song, whatever, as being the greatest, that is it. One reason, it's more than eight minutes. So during that time, you could actually drink one bourbon, one <laughs> scotch, and one beer. It's a long song. Uh, what I didn't know is originally recorded in 1953 by the great John Lee Hooker. John Lee Hooker, that version's really good. I gotta too. get that, I gotta find that. It's actually, it doesn't have that whole long intro to it, uh, but it's still a great song. Yeah, yeah, uh, covered several times, 66 Thurgood's version was 1977. We asked our viewers to give us some of their favorites. I'll give you some, you pass judgment, all okay. right? Uh, Bill Singewald said Toby Keith, Red Solo Cup. We once did a feature on that We song. did, it's yeah, great the song. Red Solo Cup is, uh, is an iconic in the world of beer. Uh, Kathy Haney Krajicek said Friends in Low Places. Notice how many of these are country songs. Yes, exactly. Well, you know, by the way, Honky Tonk Woman actually is, it is a, a country, country song. song yeah, there's no it. question about yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> Jim Brennan said anything by the Dubliners, Whiskey in a Jar, Seven Drunken Nights, Black Velvet Band, Rocky Road to Dublin. I got a bunch. And he pulled out, this is their bio on Spotify. The Dubliners were hard-drinking backstreet Dublin scrappers with unkempt hair and bushy beards whose gigs seemed to happen by accident between <laughs> fist fights. Uh, that sounds good. They remind me of the Pogues a little bit, they, who did a yeah. lot of uh, beer drinking oh, songs. Oh, Christmas too. in New York is, yeah. is not a beer drinking song, but it is. Somebody, a guy named Let's Go Flyer said Piano Man, and I so disagree because that's the version of like, if you're in a bar and they put on Piano Man, you're like, oh, duh. right? I am. 
And I don't hate Billy Joel. You? I do not like Billy Joel, but that song I have a certain weakness for, I will admit. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. And then uh, one more. Andrew Pope said the best beer drinking song is the Eagles fight song. (laughs) And I don't disagree. Okay. We are getting down to the final nitty gritty final four and our brew down. What do you got? We got a, had a great matchup of, of uh, wonderful beers, I think. In the independent division, we had Bell's Two Hearted Ale going up, globally owned, Heineken owned, Lagunitas IPA. Two great, really great good beers, IPAs. But Bell's Two Hearted Ale, which we identified very early on as probably a favorite in this whole thing, yeah. stomped them at 61% to 39%. Wow, that's a, yeah. I would have thought a little yeah. closer, but Bell's goes to the final. Michigan again in the finals. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, and then we had yeah, good for Phil Martelli. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, boy, good reach. <laughs> <laughs> Dogfish Head from the not so independent yeah. uh, category because of its association with Boston beer, up against an old school local favorite, Yingling Lager. Well, two two regional local beers, and the winner is well, not surprisingly, Dogfish Head, sixty minute IPA, sixty six percent to thirty four percent. All right, uh, Yingling had a good run. It did have a good run, but we've seen a lot of blowback on them from yeah. locals uh, who don't either you know don't like it because of their politics or because they don't t- see it as a craft as a craft beer. beer. So. But it's a very popular beer as we see. So the final is? We're going to have Bell's Two-Hearted Ale going up against the Delaware Destroyer Dogfish Head 60-Minute IPA. What's your prediction, oh, Mr. Sixpack? Oh, man, this is a tight one, but I think it's going to be Bell's because I think people just, we, we've talked about that uh, as becoming one of the signature craft beers out there, and it's available everywhere. Well, by our next episode, we'll know. Anyway, uh, we're at the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro, having a great time with all these flights. We're going to talk to Jeff Mulhern. He runs this place. Joe Sixpack, Len Mack now. It's What's Brewing. Welcome back to What's Brewing. We're at the Crooked Eye Brewery in Hatboro with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, this is one of the great Monco Makers breweries. And Jeff Melhern is the head brewer, one of the owners here. Jeff, what am I drinking? So today we have, um, it's collaboration beer that I did with um, Tilden Back in oh Chalfont. Oh, it's yeah. a bourbon barrel aged stout. It has toasted coconut. I was going to say, there's definitely a, a <laughs> coconut in the, in the nose there. Coffee so. and uh, cacao nibs. Wow. So. This one's coming in double digits ABV. 12%. Right? There you have it. Okay. <laughs> thus, thus the big bottle. Uh, this is going to be a good one. I bet you this one will keep pretty well, too, over time. Yeah. Really not the right time of year to release it, but we figured this beer can stay for a year, year plus. Um, mm-hmm. So we encourage some people, if, if you get it, definitely set one aside for for a while and the flavor is definitely going to change over time. Good, good. So let's talk a little bit about the brewery here in Hatboro. Sure. You've been open since 2014? February 2014 we were got our licensed and opened our doors. And has the brewery changed at all in that time? Uh, definitely. Um, when we first started we started very small, um, kind of on like a half barrel, barrel system. Mm-hmm. Um, for about six months to a year, then we went up to two and a half barrels, did that for another year, and then jumped up to seven barrels. So you're a full seven barrel system. That's pretty good size for a place, not a huge number of seats here. Correct. So yeah, seven seem to be like our, our happy medium where we can crank out several different beers because um, that was important to have a variety of beers. Well, I see that. And, and again, for a place your size, you've, you've got IPAs going and double IPAs going and ESB and sour and mm-hmm. a couple you know, this thing, a couple lagers. I mean, you've really got a terrific variety here. What are you most proud of? 
I think you hit the nail on the head, the variety. I like the variety. Um, we have people from all walks of life that come in. And, you know, I know hazy IPAs are super hot right now. Um, and I didn't want to have, you know, like four or five of those on and then maybe one or two various beers. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the whole spectrum of beers and also to introduce someone who might not have had an ESB before. It's a great style. We talk about it a lot. It's a style he and I both like and respect a lot. Um, yeah, me as and well. so, yeah. yeah. And it's one, I don't know if it's always a good seller, but I think it's one where you get people to try it, they will like it. Yes, and oftentimes the name will scare someone. They're like, oh, it's going to be super bitter. Bitter. Um, and that's, you know, not necessarily the case. It yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny because when we wa I walked in, we always try to have a beer taster before we yeah. start the show, just to loosen things up a little bit. And I always <laughs> grab a hazy IPA for Glenn, and yeah. there wasn't one on draft yeah. today. So uh, uh, it's nice to see the variety. I've managed was. okay. Yeah, I think you have <laughs> done okay. Um, I see you got a lot going on here. You, you have a stage in the back. You get a mm -hmm. band going on. Tell us. It's been a rough year for everybody. Tell us, you know, kind of how you're coming out of it this spring. Yeah, so music was a big thing pre-pandemic. Now that things are loosening up a bit, um, we have bands inside. Of course, we have to adhere to the, the state and local guidelines. Sure. Right now, uh, we're about 75% inside. And you got um, some spots outside. And yeah, we have some right? seating outside. Mm -hmm. People love to, especially when the weather's getting nicer, people love to sit outside, stand outside. It's, it's interesting what breweries have had to do during the pandemic. Uh, I noticed that you had some, uh, I guess it was a, a power exercise kind of class going on here at one point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we've done everything from yoga to different workshops. We had bonsai trees. We've had fly tying like type. Uh, ah, there you go. That's wars. a good drinking sport. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just be careful. All right, we, can, we, we have to ask you, though, uh, I mean, this is, you have one of the best local lo uh, brewery logos that I can think of, Crooked Eye Brewery. Uh, where did you come up with the name of that? So I kind of uh, made the name up one night. I was hung up on the word crooked, and I was working late one night, and, and it just kind of popped into my head. Um, my dad and my uncle are my two partners, so I ran that by them, and they were like, oh, this, that's, that's great, so let's an, go. Let's an go inspiration of genius, and you must have been drinking at the time that you right. came up with it? Unfortunately not. <laughs> I, was, I was working a, uh, my previous job, so I was... Uh, okay, uh, give us the hours, the days. People want to come out here to Hatboro. Uh, sure. Your location, you're right off, what's that? We're York 263 Road here, right? York yeah. Road, right at York and Montgomery Avenue. Uh, next to Silvio's Deli, the Wawa are two pretty noticeable landmarks. We're open uh, Monday through Thursdays from 5 to 10, uh, Fridays from 5 to 11, Saturdays from noon to midnight, and Sundays from 1 to 7 currently. Good. Hey, you know what? That's good. That's a lot of hours. Listen, we've had a great time here today. You do, as you said. There's a great variety of beers here. We've enjoyed them all, and we've enjoyed our day, Jeff Mulhern and Crooked Eye Brewery. Joe Sickpack, I'll see you next week. We'll see everybody for the next episode of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Maker, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia, five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. And by Concha Hocking Brewing Company, now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at ConchiExpress.com.